It's a beautiful night for high school hockey in Western Pennsylvania as we bring the action indoors to Ice Castle Arena to present the Fox Chapel Foxes and the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars Triple A Hockey, P-I-H-L action on JRM Sports in partnership with 10 Band TV. We welcome you to our broadcast perch. Austin Bechtold, Nathan Breisinger alongside here tonight. Thomas Jefferson, a team that's had a lot of success through the early portions of this season. We've reached the halfway point. The All-Star teams have been announced as well. The Fox Chapel team looking to move up in the standings as well. Yeah, absolutely. Fox Chapel trailing by two points behind Thomas Jefferson. And Thomas Jefferson, a team that is 9-2, and two, and they have a fantastic forward bunch, the top scoring team in double A. So this is going to be a high scoring affair and really defense is going to be coming at a premium tonight. Yeah, a lot of congestion in the standings as we take a look at the look at them right now as Greater Latrobe is the top team, 20 total points, 10 and 3 overall. Thomas Jefferson right there though, tied with South Fayette and Franklin Regional. A lot of teams really just mushed up together as you look at about the second to six, seven spots there. With Fox Chapel looking to try to advance, eight and five currently on the season, 16 points. A good chance to be able to do that and try to knock off Thomas Jefferson and try to get even. And Thomas Jefferson, two games in hand, as you see. I mean, Fox Chapel's played a lot of hockey so far, and a team that moved up from single A, a team that made a Penn's Cup run last year. This team is going to be looking for a big one here tonight in Ice Castle. 18 points for the Jaguars, 16 points for the Foxes. And as we take a look at some of the other matchups that are going on. Here tonight in double A, Bishop McCord is at Hempfield. Penn Trapper is playing at Greater Latrobe, that Greater Latrobe team that's currently number one overall in the standings with 20 points overall. Penn Trapper, a team that's also somewhat in the mix, 12 points at the moment. Armstrong is at South Fayette, South Fayette tied with Thomas Jefferson in total points. And here tonight, Fox Chapel at the Jaguars will do battle on the ice in just a matter of moments. We'll be back after this for Puck Drop and much more here on JRM Sports. Ross, we've always served our neighbors by offering the best value on new Ford models. This month, lease a 2023 Ford F-150 STX 4x4 Supercab for $379 per month for 36 months. Nobody beats a Kenny Ross deal. KennyRossFordSouth.com. If you accept credit payments with anyone other than eServices Payment Technology, you are paying too much. At eServices Technology, we redefine convenience and security with our cutting-edge merchant payment processing. Whether you're a small business or a large corporation, switch to a more accurate and efficient payment processing tool. Trust eServices for secure transactions that redefine the future of payments and can beat your current rates. Visit us at eServicesTech.com. Conveniently located near Baldwin High School. After being sidelined with a shoulder injury, two minutes in the box isn't so bad. Now get back out there. With AHN Sports Medicine, you're ready for what's next. Your body's rehabbed and recovered. Your legs primed to outski your defender. Your technical skills perfected. And just like that, you're back. Oh yeah, you're back. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. Double A hockey between Fox Chapel and Thomas Jefferson. Nate, where are the keys to the game on either side? For Fox Chapel, they're in playoff mode now. They've had 13 games played. They only have a couple left. And this one's a crucial one as they trail, as we talk about Thomas Jefferson in the standings. And the other key for Fox Chapel, stay the course. We talked to Cameron Radar, Radar uh, before today, and he talked about that his team needs to stay even keeled through this whole game. There's going to be some ebbs and flows, but you have to stay the course. For Thomas Jefferson, capitalize on the power play. Surprisingly, 12% conversion rating on the power play last in all of double A. That needs to change. Now, they've only had 25 power play opportunities, but they need to be able to convert. And then, as well, they need their all-stars to shine. They have seven all-stars named to that team, tied for the most in double A. So they have a lot of skilled guys on this team, especially that top line of Ryder McGurk, Andrew Oliver, and Jake Stock that is going to be in the limelight tonight. Yeah, that entire top line made the All-Star game. Pretty cool to be able to see that and also get an opportunity to see them. I'm sure with that top line on the All-Star team as we take a look at our starting lineups. The second line is starting for Fox Chapel. It's Don Casile, the freshman Tucker Cullen, Where's number eight on the left wing for Casillo and on the right wing, it's number nine, 
The senior, Nathan Sarah, with five goals to his credit this season, 10 total points. Grant Watson starts in goal for Brock Chapel. Tyler Goldstein, Max Kaiser, the defenseman. Now on the opposite side for the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars. It's Ryder McGurk, Andrew Oliver, Jake Stock, with Ronnie Perupski in goal, as well as Brian Spencer, and Jake Simon as the defense pairing. For head coach, John Zeiler, former NHL player, former Thomas Jefferson Jaguars ice hockey player as well. Had a lot of success with TJ in his high school hockey career before going on, continuing his career, then ended up in the NHL. Yeah, it was a fantastic player for TJ. Won three Penguins Cups late in the 90s and as well in 2000. And in his first year back in the program, helped the team and the Jaguars reach another Penns Cup and win as well. So four total Penns Cups in the repertoire for the TJ Jaguars. Cameron Raiden is in his seventh season leading the Fox Chapel Foxes with a good first line as well. Starting out with that younger second line, junior, sophomore, and senior on the first line of William Wiseman, Kellen Kassane, and Grant Cullen. A chance to see them in just a little bit as well. Lots of star power on these teams as Tucker Cullen, Don Casile, Nathan Sarah will start it off. Sarah also made the all-star team. William Wiseman as well for Fox Chapel. Grant Watson in net. With an 854 save percentage, a sophomore goaltender. We're ready. Puck drop underway. One back to Thomas Jefferson and now controlled by Fox Chapel. Dump back in as TJ now looks to attack. Andrew Oliver, the captain for Thomas Jefferson, giving chase to it right near the far boards. With it and tried to corral with it. But got nudged off. Now tries to get the puck back. Looking for Stock. He's got it down low. Tried to push to the front. And now Stock gives chase near the far wall where Fox Chapel is able to corral and move with it. TJ still applying pressure though. Back into the arms of Oliver and pushed towards the net, but right back towards the near wall. Where it's Sarah with it. Nathan Sarah pushes it. The opposite side of the ice might be icing here. and Indeed the case. Back into the Fox Chapel zone. And you'll see the second line come out for, or the top line rather, as Fox Chapel went with their second line. But something that Cameron Radin said, you know, when we talked to him, his top line's 1A, his second line's 1B. So these two lines, they're going to they're gonna throw a lot at you for Fox Chapel, and they're going to be met pretty equally by what Thomas Jefferson has to offer as well. Scott Allen wins the draw back for Thomas Jefferson, and Captain now punched back out from Cullen. Brady Cullen, first line out there for Fox Chapel and trying to keep it in, but not able to do so back to neutral ice. Into the arms of Allen, and Allen tried to punch it towards the net. TJ with a good opportunity towards the front. Knifes around a couple of times towards the near wall. Where Lucas blows has it and sends it back up top where it's dumped in again. Allen gives chase underneath, trying to poke it towards the net. And save is made by Watson. He pushed out at the far side circle. Allen, a senior for Thomas Jefferson, scored one of the biggest goals in recent memory for the Jaguars in overtime of that Penn's Cup final a few years back. Wiseman tries to win it back for Fox Chapel. And on the far boards, knifed at it a couple of times and won to Thomas Jefferson. The shot on goal, missed from Gavin Salopek. 61, the sophomore forward, third line deployed for Thomas Jefferson. Fight for it, towards the near wall. Now towards the net, a shot attempt that was Deflected and went wide. A couple of players fighting at it for Thomas Jefferson, and now Fox Chapel retrieves. Up the ice, killing Kissane and dumped in towards the goal. Kissane gives chase, but Thomas Jefferson there to take it away. Ryan Spencer, the all star left defenseman, first defensive pairing out there for TJ. He dumps it in and goes to the boards for a change. High forward to the far side wall. Fox Chapel looks to try to clear it out again. Able to do so. Pierce hosts for home. Can't get it out though. Towards the front. Good attempt for Thomas Jefferson. Not able to get it there to the front of the net and stoppage in play. Connor McCann coming from that deep position out in the neutral zone. Almost looking like a safety picking off that pass at the blue line. Trying to feed it over but can't find anyone to connect with. But you no know, interesting 
that Cameron Radna went with Grant Watson and Gold, the sophomore, as we talked about. It's two and three this year, starting over Joe Ratner, who's a senior and was really strong last year, was 15 and two was Ratner for the Foxes and part of that Penn's Cup team. Always a difficult balance to decide who to start, and especially in a game like this where points so critical to try to get. Blocked shot and now taken by the Foxes. Up the ice, Jacobs. Jacobs pushes it in and gives chase. Looking for Goldstein up top off the boards near side. Shoot, shot towards the net. It is covered. Perupski gets it in the glove and the face off towards the near side. Goldstein just electing to shoot that right through Flume, through the legs, trying to use that high screen off of him. And But Perupski just able to track that one all the way down into the left glove. First line on for Thomas Jefferson. Putting the Andrew Oliver, the captain. Dom Casile at the face-off circle with him. Going back to TJ. Connor McCann tried to clear it out. Dump back in. Best gives chase towards it. Kept it again by Kaiser. Tucker Cohen battling and falling towards the ice. Kaiser now gives chase back with it and Puck collided in with the official. And I think we're gonna get offsides back to center ice. As Cohen was giving chase towards the boards, delivered a sandwich. And they're right on Nick Best, the senior defenseman. And you know, one thing I noticed, took a look at Thomas Jefferson's last game against Franklin Regional that was here in Ice Castle not too long ago. TJ's a physical team. Not only do they have the skill, but they'll play a physical game, but we see Fox Chapel giving it right back to them. And there was a penalty called on Fox Chapel as well. Goes on Max Kaiser. On man advantage now. The Thomas Jefferson Jaguars on the power play. We talked about it, TJ, 12% on the power play so far this year. That's dead last in all of double A. So we'll see what they can build here. They try to get a couple looks, but Fox Chapel able to take it away quickly. Right down and Perupski gives it over to Stock. We'll slow it down. 133 to go on the penalty. Right up the ice by Spencer. Into the zone. All the way around for Oliver. Oliver still with it. Stock. Now over to Brian Spencer. Back over to Oliver. Oliver's shot is deflected and taken by Stock. Right behind the net. And a whistle called. Net came off is what they're going to call there. Yes, there will be a face off. They're going to get it at the left side circle. Indeed the case. So 1.13 to go on the penalty to Max Kaiser. 12.56 remains here in the first period of play. No score. Thomas Jefferson and Fox Chapel. Austin Bechtold, Nathan Breisinger alongside as Scott Allen will try to win it back for Thomas Jefferson, able to do so to Stock. And now back to Oliver. Oliver shot, long rebound, Stock not able to get it though. And it's poked off the glass. Good job there to be able to clear it out from Nathan Sarah, the senior, out there on the penalty kill. Didn't know how TJ would handle that whistle being blown. They finally started to get momentum on the power play and then this time, though, off the faceoff, won the draw and able to get a good shot on. First unit still out there. Oliver's shot deflected around a couple of times and behind the net. Oliver gets it back. Swung around. Looking to try to connect in the front of the net. Not there, though. Looking for McGurk. To the back and Stock. Stock clears it over. Oliver fought along four on the wall, and Sarah once again punches it out. So Spencer gives chase. 24 seconds remain on the penalty as the second unit comes on for TJ. McGurk tries to keep it in. Wiseman punches it back into the Thomas Jefferson zone, though. We're giving chase. Kaelin Kassane's there. Kassane along the boards. One back for Thomas Jefferson with eight seconds left. Ryder McGurk up the ice. McGurk, right side wing. Towards the net, McGurk scores! With just enough time left. On the power play, Ryder McGurk delivers his fourth game, his fourth goal of the season and his 10th game of the year to give Thomas Jefferson a one nothing lead. Man, can Ryder McGurk fly. No wonder he's heading to the All-Star game. Look at that, just takes it well wide. Just comes in and tucks it on Watson. 
Just a beautiful goal, beautiful individual effort where maybe things weren't going so well on the power play, getting in around the goal, but this time McGurk just takes it all himself. Just in the nick of time. One back again to McCann and Thomas Jefferson. Goes off the stick of Hill and Gallus gives chase. Ryan Gallus with it, back up to McCann. McCann shot towards the net, long rebound. Fight for it there, but it will be fought off by Grant Watson. TJ, once again, great puck possession, but now Fox Chapel looks to try to move up with it. And Best pokes it toward another one of the Foxes. Giving chases, Liam Wiseman, top line out there for Fox Chapel. But again, McCann and TJ are there. Hill tried to keep it in, not able to do so, and try to be fought back on. Or it's dumped into the TJ zone. McCann gives chase. Looks for Weiss up the boards. He's got it now. Weiss dumps it for Gallus. Gallus has some room on that left side wing. Also has a man trailing with him. Ought to find him there. Tried to center in front, but poked away. Up the ice comes Kissane. Kissane, one of the best opportunities so far for Fox Chapel. Fed it to the middle, but no one was there in front of the net. Now Kissane's got it back. Trying to set up Wiseman in the front, but again poked away by Thomas Jefferson. Strip Matter tries to keep it. Wiseman shot. Save made by Perupski. Fox Chapel finally putting their first true offensive look together here. And it started with Kissane. I mean, he was able to drag a couple defenders with him as he was going down that right wing wall and threw it. And there was no one there crashing the net. I mean, that's one of the staples in hockey. Your second guy's got to go to the net and no one's there. We're probably, what, five minutes with one shot on goal? Maybe yeah. not even for Fox probably, Chapel? Probably one, yeah. I mean, really not a ton of looks for a team that has a, has a lot of talent. And they can score. They can put the puck in the back of the net. Both these two teams scoring above five goals per game. Here it goes, Ryder McGurk again. A two-on-one emerges. McGurk's shot is denied. Great save by Grant Watson. Pulio shot, deflected around a couple of times. Watson with another save. Fought around four and kept in by the Jaguars. Dump back to Spencer. Shot towards the net. Three-on-one, Fox Chapel just trying to clear it out. And it's brought up by Osterholm. Dump back in. Here comes Spencer again. But in the on-man break. Four on two emerges as McGurk now backs out of it. Punched around and off the boards. Isaac Jacobs now dumped in from Fox Chapel as Jacobs will get, try to give chase. And Fox Chapel again with another line change. The difference in speed between these two teams, are, two teams are starting to become really apparent. I mean, just Ryder McGurk able to fly down, and they're doing a really good job of also attacking the net, getting a couple good looks on their last offensive possession for TJ. Work was able to fight off stock there, but once again, poke back to center ice where Puglio dumped it into the Fox Chapel end. The Fox Chapel not really just not being able to get much of an edge in terms of speed as Sarah gets it knocked away by Weiss. Weiss with some room, being hounded there. Back up top, McCann's shot is blocked. Sent to the far boards. Under nine minutes to go in the first period. Weiss's shot is rejected and denied by Watson. Great opportunity, but right into the belly of Watson for the save. Great feed there by Blows to, to Weiss, and Sarah was just trailing on, trying to pick up that guy, and a great look there, and Watson is able to square up and make the save. Right side circle face off and finally one back to Fox Chapel. The majority of the face offs have gone to TJ so far. Yeah, everything seems to be going the Thomas Jefferson way right now, except here. And a goal for Fox Chapel. Great opportunity, and the goal scored by Tucker Cullen, the freshman. His eighth goal of the season, and a star is emerging for Fox Chapel, his 19th point of the year. What are they called? The broadcaster jinx? Saying the word, right as I was saying the words that TJ's really taken over this game so far to start. Here comes Tucker Cullen right down the wing and this freshman, man, he is on fire, as you said. This is eighth goal of the year for the freshman. Grady Cullen, his older brother, the senior, only has six playing on the top line. And that was the line that started out the game today with Cullen getting on the board. And as you mentioned, Tucker Cullen, eight goals on the year and you know, a nice story. The first goal he scored in his high school career was assisted by his brother, Grady Collin. Yeah, really cool to see. Towards the front, TJ tries to knock it away, and they get a penalty. 
more opportunities for Fox Chapel really emerging in the last couple of minutes and get a good shot here as Thomas Jefferson. Unfortunately for them, it's Cameron Lorenzi going off to the box. And at the top of the show, we talked about one of the keys for Fox Chapel is staying the course and being even keeled. And again, that's one message that's huge from the Fox Chapel coaching staff. They need to be patient. And they, they were patient enough, you know, they go down one nothing. They were able to find the equalizer. And now they get a, another chance to, to get ahead. Lucas blows, poked it away from the Foxes and put it right back into the Fox Chapel zone. Right off the face off and good job there. Looks like Fox Chapel was able to corral it and try to set something up and now Casil sends it back for Goldstein who wasn't able to get it off his stick and 20 plus seconds, now 30 seconds have gone by. The shot has not been attempted yet for Fox Chapel as Casil dumps it in. McCann tried to poke it away. Now here's Grady Cohen. Set it around Casil. They look try to set up Goldstein up top. He's got it. Swung back around now. Dom Casil. His shot is blocked by his own man in front. Grady Cullen, the recipient of that block. Off the shot and all the way back down again. One minute has gone by on the penalty to Lorenzi. Oliver and blows with the high pressure there. And it made Casil just, you know, try to take a quick shot from the point. And he throws it right into one of his guys. And TJ really being aggressive on this penalty kill. Jake Stock once again pushed it back into the Fox Chapel zone. Kissane brings it through and offside's called. 41 seconds remain on the penalty. 6.47 to go. First period of play. Tied at one apiece. Goals from Tucker Cullen for Fox Chapel. The last goal scored in the game. Ryder McGurk, the first goal of the game for Thomas Jefferson at 9 and 2 overall. 18 points on the season. Currently second place in double A. Fox Chapel with 16 points. That's good for fifth place, 8 and 5 overall. And both McGurk and Cullen's goal, exceptional plays. Great shot by Cullen and the great individual effort by McGurk. And you know, that's a little bit what we're going to see and expect from this game. Sarah tried to get it to Tucker Cullen. Strip matter tries to save it, but just punches it back in. 23 seconds remaining. Controlled by Thomas Jefferson and Nick Best sends it all the way down. Watson corrals behind the net. Dylan Work out there. Second unit for Fox Chapel in the last eight seconds. Strip Matter brings it in. Strip Matter tried to center. Throws it towards the net. Puck up for grabs and goes off the near side boards where Sarah goes to get it. And the penalty comes to an end. Back to five on five. Dumped back in by Thomas Jefferson. Defense pairs changing out for the Jaguars as Fox Chapel brings it through the neutral zone and dumped in. Really not a lot of promising looks for Fox Chapel on that power play. TJ did a phenomenal job of staying in the lanes, you know, being active and, and taking away any sh shooting opportunities for the, the Foxes. And another whistle. They get another penalty called here. The call's elbowing, but see who do they get to the box. Jacobs for Fox Chapel. Yeah, Isaac Jacobs, the senior, out there on the third line with the elbowing call. So a lot of power plays so far in this game. It was a little bit earlier on in the play. PJ wins the draw. Oliver with it. Swings it to the near side boards. Best Oliver shot. Deflected back. To the far side. Crowd behind the net. We're going to try to center. Shot! Spencer can't get it to go. Trying to clear it out. It's poked up into the netting. Tremendous vision there and also chemistry by Scott Allen to find Spencer creeping in on that right side. Just a great pass from out back. So you see him. Just kept dropping there's down. A, there's a deflection there by Best. Man. Going right towards our camera, but needs to get that down and in to Watson. Try to get either a rebound or try to get that on net. And high off the glass as Best is able to poke it behind the cage. Now Spencer can corral it. Spencer slows it down behind the net again. Best with it. Now Oliver. Oliver can't keep it in. Back to the neutral zone. Andrew Oliver plays the point on the power play. 
1.14 to go. He brings it through. Oliver to Stock. Stock to Spencer. Spencer, it's off his stick. Wiseman on the deflection. Now an opportunity the full length of the ice, but nothing there. Don Casil could not corral it. And Casil maneuvers towards the cage. Casil with the shot and just goes wide. 50 seconds remaining on the penalty to Jacobs. Allen brings it through and towards the near side. It's Stock. Stock shot. Save made by Watson. What an opportunity on the other end. A little bit of back and forth action as we go. And man, just a great look for Casil as he was chasing it down. And then comes from behind the net for his second opportunity. And just can't get it on goal. I mean, that's a, a huge opportunity that's wasted there for Casil. If he could get it on net and something could happen there. 38 seconds remain on the penalty to Jacobs. Blows with it. Second unit on. Wise tried to corral it. Now it's Gallus down low. Towards the boards. Blows calling for it. Off the stick tap and gets it. Blows towards the net. Fought off by Watson. Here's Wise trying to go through traffic, but knocked away and sent back out into the TJ zone where the last five seconds can matriculate off the board and the penalty comes to an end. The power play over, McCann brings it up. Wise dumps it in, it's Gallus with it. Gallus towards the net and Watson fights it off. Cleared by Fox Chapel off the boards. Looking for Kissane, but it goes the full length of the ice and icing's called. It's the third time so far this game where we've seen Thomas Jefferson trying to catch the Fox Chapel defenders flat-footed and trying to walk around them, get an opportunity. And that's something that definitely needs to change because they're just using their speed, taking it to the outside and driving towards the net. That's now the third or fourth time we've seen it. Yeah, we have a ton of opportunities in this game. A lot of good looks. 3.22 to go, first period. Face off again, one back by Thomas Jefferson. Shot, deflected in front. No, they're gonna call no goal for high sticking, but boy, that looked right at the crossbar. I don't know. See if we can get another look right from behind the net. Right there. Yeah, there. It, it from that angle does look high. It was Roman Flume, the freshman forward on the fourth line that tried to just tap it in, but over top of the bar. And the one thing though there to point out, even though no goal flume, a tremendous job to get around the all-star defender and Tyler Goldstein, who's their best defender for Fox Chapel. He was able to get open and, and get a stick on it, but it was high above the bar. Would have been his first goal of the year. One back towards Hill. And spun around off the top of the glass and kept in play. Lorenzi dumps it in. Ball off behind the net. Swung around and the attack comes from Fox Chapel and Wiseman. And Wiseman got it knocked away, but back to center and Cullen. Cullen tries to keep it in Fox Chapel's possession. Goldstein swings it around. Off the glass, Kissain tries to tip it to Wiseman. Wiseman being fought off for with Simon. Wiseman corrals. Tips it up to Grady Cullen, dumps it in behind the Thomas Jefferson net. Simon pokes it back to his mate in Spencer. Spencer continues to fight for it, trying to look for puck possession and tips it back now to neutralize. Grady Cullen with it, looked for Hill and dumped it back to Wiseman. Now Grady Cullen. Cullen through center. Knocked away again. Back out to neutral red. Two minutes to go. And a little bit of change left in the first period of play. Wiseman got it knocked away towards the near side and up with it is Stock. Another good opportunity for TJ. Ryder McGurk. Another shot attempt at it. He pokes it again towards Stock. Near side. Stock chips it, but no one there. TJ in the midst of a line change. Kaiser can't keep it. Stock moves up with it. Stock with McGurk, as well as a shot attempt there. Andrew Oliver also in the mix. Best can't keep it. Goes all the way down. Best fights for it with Jacobs. 
118 to go in the period. Drop back for a shot that went wide. And fought off for McCann, trying to give chase to it with Haberman. One minute to go. Stock tries to dump it in. McCann also there. And McGurk touched it, but offside ruled. This top line's been out here for quite a while, and Ryder McGurk's really had his name written all over this first period so far with the goal for TJ, a couple of good looks. His last shot, though, went well wide. But, man, he's, he's a heck of a player for Thomas Jefferson. And that's going to be a guy they're going to have to limit Fox Chapel the rest of the way. 51 seconds still to go here in the first period of play back in the Fox Chapel end. Bought off four and poked away nicely from Gallus, but taken by the Foxes. Tipped around a couple of times and back into the Fox Chapel end where Strip Matter will have to give chase. Back there with Goldstein. It's Goldstein that plays it back to Strip Matter. Now up the boards and Sarah. Pollo swings it around. Casillo is there as well as the goal scorer, Tucker Cullen. Swung around and deflected a couple of times. Now TJ can take possession, 19 seconds. Goldstein fights for it. He's there with Lorenzi. I think one of the lights. <laughs> one of the lights was flashing in here. One of the lights just flashed in the building. I thought the power was about to go out. That would last, not have been fun. In the last seven seconds. So the first period comes to an end. 1-1 one, one between Fox Chapel and Thomas Jefferson. We're back in the second period of the moment here on JRM Sports in partnership with Tebian TV. Shopping for a new or pre-owned vehicle? Dean Honda is one of the largest volume dealerships in the Pittsburgh area, offering sales, service, and parts. Our service center offers competitive pricing and same-day service. If you're looking to sell your vehicle, stop by Dean Honda and leave with a check in hand. Visit us on Route 51 in Pleasant Hills or at DeanHonda.com. We've always served our neighbors by offering the best value on new Ford models. This month, lease a 2023 Ford F-150 STX 4x4 Super Cab for $379 per month for 36 months. Nobody beats a Kenny Ross deal. KennyRossFordSouth.com. Here at Loway, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at Loway is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. 1-1 at Ice Castle as we go to the second period of play. And Nate, that was the first period that was pretty much dominated by Thomas Jefferson shot-wise, but the opportunity for Tucker Cohen in front of the net made it a tie game. Yeah, pretty action-packed first period. TJ out shooting the Foxes 10-5. That was an almost, almost an own goal on Fox Travel there as Watson was able to clear. Yeah, but... TJ, 10 to 5 in the shot categories. Both teams with power play chances, but 0 for so far. And that could be a big decider in this game. I mean, Definitely. whoever can score on the special teams is, is, is a huge difference. So Watson covered faceoff, was one back to Thomas Jefferson. Another opportunity, but poked away. Good job there from Grady Cullen to send it back to center ice. And now back into Thomas Jefferson's zone. Fought around four and taken by McCann. Chips it up to Weiss. Played back to McCann again. And then best out there, the deep pairs for Thomas Jefferson. Swung it around for Kaiser. Right for it behind the net. Looking for best. He called for it off the stick tap. And now moves with it far side. Best with the shot. Deflected. And a good save from Watson. Allen tried to swing it around too. But poked back on a 2 1 1 opportunity. Wiseman could not slow it down. Chipped off his stick to the near side. Wiseman centers in front. Had a good chance at it. Him and McCann pushing and shoving after the play. And now they break it up themselves. I think they might be going, both going to the box. Yeah, you knew things could take a turn, get a little chippy. I mean, that's the type of game it is. We talked about Fox Chapel's in playoff mode. I mean, the, the, every point 
from now on are critical in these standings to, to jockey for positioning. And eight teams, I believe, make the playoffs in double A as well as triple A in the PIHL. So a huge game. Things can get a little chippy. We've seen TJ starting to throw the body. We saw a big hit early on the game from Colin on best. And, and there was the hit from McCann. It wasn't really much of anything. But Wiseman kind of took some action with it. And McCann as well. Got into it a little bit, and Connor McCanley wise into the box. One thing, you know, you didn't see is any refs flying in there. They they sort of let him be, and they knew that it would have calmed down eventually. But both guys in the box for two. So we stay five on five. Stock got shoved to the ice, and that might be the call. I think we might be getting a penalty on Fox Chapel. At least that appeared to be the case. As best right there in just the middle of the ice, might not be. It might just. see here. Now, yeah. referees are pointing. That being the case is it's Pierce Osterholm going off to the box. Power play opportunity for Thomas Jefferson Jaguars. Still some confusion here. But one back. Spencer with it. Swung it around. Oliver shot towards the net. Deflects around a couple of times. Second chance at it. Watson pins it in between his legs. Eight seconds went off on the power play. Watson fought off the first shot, second shot, third shot. Good chance there from McGurk, looking for his second goal. Watson's already seen a ton of shots, and McGurk just adding more on, piling them on right now. And that's you know what Thomas Jefferson wants to do is just keep putting the shots on goal. They ain't gonna come pretty. Fox Chapel wins the face off, but it was stocked that threw it right towards the net. Blocked and he got it right back. Circling around with it. Spencer, Oliver. Oliver shot, deflected around, and Best couldn't poke it in. Spencer to Oliver. Oliver with a lot of open ice. His shot goes wide. Might have been over top of the goal. And Spencer with another chance with it. Cross rink pass to Stock. Not touched on the way there, but Stock corrals. Down low. Stock has it again. Stock couldn't get the shot off. Watson fights it off. Allen's there trying to poke at it. A lot of guys there, but it's Cullen that ends up with it. Tucker Cullen tried to poke it out. TJ remains in the offensive zone as Tucker Cullen puts Allen to the deck. Scott Allen battling. Now Spencer. Across the ring for Stock. McGurk down low. Also has Allen with him. Allen has it. Scott Allen. Throws it in front. Now, again, Oliver tries to corral. 45 seconds left. On the power play. Oliver. Comes it back in. Now up top again, Oliver. Oliver's shot hits off the post. Fought around four, and Allen was trying to keep it in. Spencer also tries to do the same, but it's back to center ice. Here comes Tucker Cullen moving with it now. Cullen with three defenders there for Thomas Jefferson. Spencer now moves up with it as a three on two emerges. Spencer backtracks, has Weiss with him as well. Spencer through traffic, dumps it towards the near side boards and poked out again. Seven seconds left, and this will do it on the penalty. Man, Fox Chapel, the coaches and on the bench, clinching your teeth there and the fans in the stands. I mean, a lot of looks from TJ. They just, they're just shooting at will, and as you see there, to end this power play, but I mean, they're turning and firing everything they, they can. That was Gallus who shot it and saved by Watson there, but might have hit the crossbar on that shot that you can always hear it ding off the iron. It's like a puck off the iron, a football off the goal post, very distinct sound to it. Not able to make it two to one. Something you don't want to hear if you're a goalie either because you don't know if that's in or out. So good power play opportunity for Thomas Jefferson. Nothing ended up emerging from it. Kylan Kissane fights it towards the net. Couple of shots and poking at it, but Porupski able to get the whistle called. Buck was still alive there, but the whistle stops play. As he did cover. Buck drop at the far side circle. Kissain tried to win it and tried to poke it around. Another shot, deflected wide. Here's Weiss moving up with it. Weiss 
Tried to be flighted off by Kaiser, but Weiss still has it. Tried to chip it up, and now an on-man break. Here comes an opportunity for Nathan Serra. Serra towards the net. Penalty called. Now, will it be a power play or a penalty shot? I think they're giving him a penalty shot. Sarah had the break and hauled down. And you see the speed able to steal the puck away. But he's hauled down there just at the top of your screen. That should be a penalty shot. And that is indeed going to be the case. Nathan Weiss with the, the defensive play there. Nathan Sarah, five goals, 10 points on the season. And number nine, the senior will get a chance against Ronnie Porupski. Porupski, 262 goals against average this season. He'll get a shot with a puck on his stick and the penalty shot. 12.48 to go in the second period. We're tied at one. Fox Chapel trying to grab the advantage. Nathan Serra, the puck on his stick. The shot just is deflected. And a good save made. Ronnie Porupski denies him and keeps it at one. And he's frustrated. Went, slammed his stick on the boards. I mean, that's a... A heck of a shot, but just can't get it on net. Had that blocker side, as you can see where he wanted it. Oh, the save there by Porowski. Very good save. Just got enough of it. Looked like it. It's probably going to have enough on it. Not go wide, not go over top the cage either. He didn't have a ton of room there. I mean, he probably could have went a little bit more glove side, but nonetheless, I mean, don't see those very often in high school hockey, getting those penalty shots. Oliver with it towards the middle was trying to connect there with Stock. Now fought off. Crowd by Fox Chapel, Goldstein. Now Osterholm. Has Kaiser with them behind. Deflected around a couple of times. Simon tries to clear. Shot attempt is saved. Porowski just got enough of it. For a second there, Probski looked like he didn't even know where it was. I mean, just a great turning shot there to get it towards the net. But just couldn't trickle through for Fox Chapel. Now, how about this note, Nate? This is something that doesn't even sound like it's true. Thomas Jefferson in the second period has outscored their opponents 24 to 6. Man, they're not a, they're not a team that starts off super hot or a team that, you know, really scores a lot late, but they're a team that can jump on you in that second period. And we talked about just in general. I mean, they're a high scoring team. 5.55 goals per game is tops in double A. And they have, you know, the players that can do it. We've seen the skill from a lot of these guys so far. And, you know, some good looks on the power play as well. A power play that just can't seem to find the back of the net, but a ton of good looks and chances on the last one. They've outscored their opponent in every period, 16 to 10 in the first, 24 to six in the second, 21 to 12 in the third. Now pop back to the near side, here's Puglio. Leads it for blows. Blows through center, now into the Fox Chapel, and a high shot goes off the netting. On the attempt there from Nick Best. And to, add, and to add on to that point, Austin, that you mentioned, I mean, six goals given up all season in the second period. I mean, this team, Thomas Jefferson, just playing well defensively. They only allowed 2.55 goals as well. That's the second fewest in double A. So this team is really well-rounded and well-built. You know, a team that can be sustainable, I mean, make a Tough run here in double A. And they've had a lot of high scoring games. To be able to get those numbers, need a lot of high scoring blowout games. 6 1 against Franklin Regional, 7 3 against Latrobe, 7 1 against Norwin, 12 0 against North Hills. Shot goes wide, fought around for a couple of times. And corralled by the Jaguars, looking to try to set it up towards the net. Poked around a couple of times, again denied. So many shots towards the net from Salapec, but not able to poke it in. Wow, Watson has fought off a lot of rubber so far in this game, and he's continued to impress and get better as the game has gone. I mean, he's just seeing the pucks really well, but a ton of opportunities there. Fox Chapel needs to do a better job of clearing out that front in front of Watson. Dylan Work tried to get it up to Colin, but Salopec again with the deflection keeps it in. Gallus for Salopec. He fights for it, and now back up to Kissan. Kept in. Kissan with the puck back on his stick. Tucker Cullen 
fell to the ice. Now gets back up and looks to try to pressure. Fought off four, and now Casile. Casile dumps it back into the Thomas Jefferson end. Best up the boards. Kaiser corrals. Kaiser tried to chip it back in. Here's Cullen. Kiss in to Cullen. Cullen gets the shot off and just goes wide. And a penalty upcoming. Looked like Jake Simon was cross-checked to the ground. Now Salopec having a couple of words there as well. Salopec and Casile having a few words as it's Kissane going to the box. Yeah, just a bad play. Kissane trying to get after the puck, but he decides to throw the body and just at the wrong time. Interested to see what they call. Not sure if it was interference or not, but another thing to mention, Kissane's in the box, but Liam Wiseman's also in there with Brian McCann, who were both given 10-minute misconducts for on that shoving, you know, little match that they had in the corner. So they've been out. They won't get back onto the ice until 6.53 at a whistle after 6.53. Power play for TJ. We're under 10 minutes to go in the second period of play. Allen with it. Allen towards the cage. Pokes it in front, but nothing there for Ryder McGurk and back into the Thomas Jefferson end, cleared out by Fox Chapel. Great job by the Foxes to stay alert. That puck coming right in a high scoring opportunity area, but able to clear it out. Oliver Spencer, McGurk, as well as Allen and Stock out there for TJ on the power play. Stock with it towards the near side. Stock towards the net. Might have went off the mask of Watson. That was a play. That was high up on Watson, but Man, TJ just firing these shots, trying to pick any corner they can. That one up and into the netting, but Watson, I think, might have got it with his shoulder, but regardless, I mean, TJ is shooting for anything right now. 119 to go on the penalty, to kiss it. Stock wins the draw back cleanly. Spencer has it up top. Spencer towards the net, left it wide, and deflects up into the netting. I think it might have hit the ceiling, one of the beams. Yeah, hit the, hit the partition at the bottom that goes around the, the top of the board and flew up into the netting. But again, we talked about it on the last couple power plays that we've seen from TJ. Man, they do not waste any time. I mean, seriously, they win a faceoff and they're getting ready to shoot. And they win so many draws cleanly. If the shot is in, Andrew Oliver, his 13th goal of the season at team high, 13 goals for Oliver and Thomas Jefferson on the power play takes a two to one lead. And it starts all from the faceoff, from Oliver winning it back. And Brian Spencer locates Oliver on the left wing, and Oliver just able to, to pick a spot. As we've talked about, TJ been trying to pick these spots on Watson, and it finally goes through. TJ hockey flag being waved for the lead. 2-1, 8.54 to go. Second period. Andrew Oliver, that first line with both goals, Oliver and McGurk. Tucker Cullen battles down low, lost the puck, tries to get it back. A couple of Jaguars are there. Casile sends it back in for Cullen. Cullen and Sarah also out there near the far side boards. Spencer wins it though, into the possession of TJ. Up the ice and the glove of Allen came off. They get a delayed penalty here. Blows. I think they're up by Fox Chapel. I think they're going to call a slash on that play. 8-17 yeah. in the period. Tucker Cullen slashing Allen when he lost his glove. He was with the puck, and you can see the stick coming down and just another a lazy penalty for Fox Chapel. And immediately after TJ scores on the power play, just something that cannot happen if you're the Foxes. A lot of penalties on Fox Chapel so far. So Tucker Cullen to the box. A lone goal scorer for Fox Chapel tonight. And sent out. Kissane was able to clear it. Clear back and now Spencer with it. Here's Oliver, the latest goal scorer. Sends it up the ice to Stock. Stock with Allen and Best. Stock back up top, Spencer to Oliver. Spencer gets it back, shot towards the net. 
fought off for by Watson. Stock tries to get it back. He does on the stick of Stock with Allen in front. Also with Betts there, shot is towards the near side boards and Karashay's all the way back to Oliver. Oliver brings it back in. Allen, Best, and Stocker there. Spencer trails. Now Spencer. Near side Stock. Stock behind the net. Gets it back. Stock tried to poke it in. Loose in front and now back out to Oliver. Oliver towards the net, left it wide. Fight for it towards the near side. Kissane tries to clear it out but can't. Spencer keeps. Casil also there. Shot was deflected and blocked on the attempt as Oliver tries to keep it and pokes it back in. Allen shot off the glove of Watson. Spencer back to Allen. Allen sends it over best and not able to be tipped in. As Stock sent it for best, but nothing was there. Now here's Casil with an opportunity. Casil in front of the net, poked around, net came off of its markings and with 23 seconds to go. We'll have a puck drop. And you can see there Dom Casile just gasped, but trying to give everything he can to try to power move towards the net. And one thing that Cameron Raiden uh, really likes about Casile's game is he said he's someone that's not afraid to get to that dirty area. And that was a kid that was going straight into the crease no doubt. to try to get a goal there. A lot of speed, something we've seen a lot from TJ. But Casile was there with the speed, trying to poke it in and make it a 2-2 game again. 6.40 to go. Thomas Jefferson leads Fox Chapel. 2-1 here at Ice Castle. Austin Bechtel, Nathan Breisinger alongside here on JRM Sports in partnership with 10 Band TV. Face off towards the near side boards and at the left side circle. Casil on the penalty kill will try to win it back and does. Bump back in by work. And just sent out to center ice. It's not what they wanted to do there, especially with the 15 seconds left on the power play, just chipped out by Simon. Work sends it back in, Simon's there to chase it with only seven seconds left. Last couple of seconds will tick off of the penalty, which is now officially over. Dump back in, McGurk trying to give chase as well. McGurk with Gallus, McGurk with it. Gallus goes towards the front of the net, now back up to Simon. Simon, his shot deflected around and taken by Sarah. Tucker Cullen out of the box. Dom Casil towards the middle, but fought off by Thomas Jefferson and Gallus. Here's Weiss. Simon dumps it back in on offsides and now waved off. Dylan Work moves it up to Cullen. Cullen tried to tip it up, Simon there, and also Casil. Casillo lost it. A lot of guys colliding right near the blue line, and then we're gonna get another penalty. Yeah, a lot of penalties right now so far in this second period, and just bodies sort of flying there and coming together. McGurk's gonna get the call as Casillo went down. And also McCann is out of the box, so the 10 minutes is over. Both guys out of the box. McCann comes right back on the ice. And you have to think Wiseman also would come on for, there he is, he's gonna man the top of the power play. Yeah, 25 is out there. One thing for Wiseman, he's a defenseman turned forward, so he will play up at the top on this power play for Fox Chapel. Ryder McGurk guilty of the call. Two minutes to the box with 5.20 to go in the second period of play, and set all the way down. Watson stops it. Goldstein leaves it though. Allen's there, tried to poke it in front. Still has possession of it. Here's Allen, who dumps it back in. Trying to give it to Oliver, giving chase out there on the penalty kill. How about your captain out there as well? First line center, helping to lead the charge. Absolutely, and TJ's not afraid to forecheck on the penalty kills. Two guys in low. Gotta hope that doesn't turn into a terrible opportunity. On Throw the it in way. front and went wide for Casil. Now back up top to Wiseman with Goldstein there at the blue line. Goldstein's got it. Goldstein shot, fought off and saved by Perovsky. Fox Chapel on their power play so far. Not a ton of opportunities and chances as we've talked about. TJ just being super aggressive, you know, forcing them to make passes and, and getting sticks on pucks and getting it out. So Fox Chapel hasn't seen a lot of good chances, but 
Finally getting a shot on Porowski there. 111 to go on the power play. Kissing can't win it back. And Goldstein can't keep it. Up the ice goes Stock. Stock has it with blows. And Stock just apparently goes right back out the center ice and dumps it in. Played up by Wiseman. Wiseman, shot it in! Liam Wiseman, sharp shooter towards the net on the power play and ties it up at two. Another tremendous shot from Fox Chapel. We saw Cullen in the first period and now it's Wiseman just down the left side and man, that's a shot from far out. That's one Perupski probably wants to have back over his shoulder. Just picking his corner. We've seen a couple of those so far this game. Had an action-packed two periods. Knotted up at two again. It's not been a lot of time where somebody has consistently held the lead. Absolutely. And it, Liam Wiseman sitting in that box for 10 minutes was probably contemplating how he's going to score his next goal. And there it is. Into the glove of Watson. Face off the far side circle. So 3.57 remains in the second period. It's been action packed. The shots have still mostly been in Thomas Jefferson's favor. And one back to the Jaguars. Taken down by Fox Chapel. Easter Holm dumps it back in. Spencer gives chase. Also there, Jacobs. Spencer up the ice. Easter Holm deflects it in and offside's called. Fox Chapel on the season has won the last two games after losing the last two games, dating back to South Bay on November 30th, a 7-2 loss. That was followed by a 6-3 loss to Norwin, but then the last two, pretty good. At North Hills, a North Hills team that's struggling. 7-2 played at the RMU Ice Arena, and then 3-1 the win against Bishop McCord. Shot towards the night. Watson, once again, able to hold on as Allen's shot was sent right towards him. One and done on the shot at them. And two of those losses for Fox Chapel coming against Norwin. And Norwin, another team that came up with them to double A, a team that Fox Chapel dispatched in the semifinals last year in that Penn's Cup run. So very familiar with them, but Norwin's had their number so far this year. And losses by a couple of goals, seven to four, as well as three to six, the two losses this year. Lorenzi with it, brings it into the Fox Chapel end. Fought off and now Cullen. Tucker Cullen with it, up to Wiseman. Wiseman has space, Wiseman towards the net, fought off for by Porupski. Towards the front, lots of bodies colliding again in front of the net. Now taken by Lorenzi, Lorenzi to Salopek. Salopek up the near side, Salopek off the glove of Watson. Salopek gives chase, fights for it. Towards the front, poked around a couple of times and goes behind the cage. Not sure why Scott Allen was allowed to come out with plenty of space in front of the net. I mean, no defenders there from Fox Chapel able to converge there. TJ makes a line change. Salopek dumps it back in. Work there, but went off his stick. Oliver now battles with him right behind the cage. Not much puck movement there, trying to get it out, and now able to do so as Nick Best fights with it. Now Oliver. Oliver trying to tip it towards the front. Ryder McGurk has it. Looks for Oliver on the stick of Porter Hill. Poked around and now Oliver. Oliver's shot goes wide. McGurk near side. Dumps it off the boards. Over to McCann. The far side boards. McCann's shot, long rebound, but fought off four by Cullen. Tucker Cullen tries to send it back out to center ice and is able to do so. Sarah able to not chip it in though. Back into the Fox Chapel side of the zone. Seen a couple opportunities so far here in the last few seconds from Connor McCann stepping in off the point. Couple pinches, trying to keep it in on that third attempt, but it comes out. But he's been really active there back there. After one of those pinches, also gave another shove. So I mean he's really getting physical. We've seen him, you know, get in that shoving match with Wiseman already in the early on this period. Yeah, he's been solid. A time that he's been out there. 136 to go in the second period. 
Oliver and Dom Casil for the faceoff. One back by Oliver. Deflected around. McGurk trying to poke it in. McGurk on the wraparound. Still with it. Back up top. Here's Best. Fanning on the shot. Now McGurk with a shot. Rather, Oliver. Now back out to Best. Here's Stock. Stock to the front. No one home. Oliver sends it back to Best. Best is shot into the glove of Watson. Skied up to grab that one. 110 in the period. And Fox Chapel's getting pretty lucky here in this defensive zone. A lot of puck watching. You know, keeping their eyes on players, and that's what's allowing TJ to sneak in behind a lot of, get a lot of players back door. I mean, on that play, on that save, Watson able to make the play, but they had another guy sitting on the doorstep. I mean, that's something Fox Chapel needs to correct, especially in this intermission coming up. Goldstein pokes it up to Cullen. Grady Cullen can't play it, though. Oliver has it. Top line still out there for TJ. Trying to get stock on the back door, but deflected around by Fox Chapel. Now it's center ice past the blue line. Here's Cullen. Grady Cullen looks for Casil. Not there, though, and swung around to Kaiser. Kaiser with a shot. Deflected, but Kissane could not get it to go. 42 seconds to go and a delayed penalty. Stock able to get a puck. Able to get a stick on the puck. 36.3 to go in the second period. And it looks like the penalty is going to go on Ryder McGurk. McGurk, his second penalty already. Roughing again is the call. Something you got to be careful with. You take too many penalties, you'll get ejected from the game. So, and that's your guy who's been really leading the offense, flying around for Thomas Jefferson. But Fox Chapel. Another opportunity to get back ahead, to get ahead for the first time, rather. Kissane cannot win it back, but it is swung around to Wiseman. Wiseman tried to swing it cross ice. Casil now. On, now Goldstein. Casil. Wiseman. Wiseman shot. Blocked in front by Spencer. Spencer sends it up the boards. Trying to connect with Allen. Gallus also out there on the penalty kill for TJ. Touched up as a player down for Thomas Jefferson. That's Nick Best. Now whistles with 3.3 seconds. Best. Just a little bit slow to get up. His helmet was kind of knocked off as well as he hit the ice. And after Best went down, Fox Chapel still trying to get in on net. A nice give and go here as you see. That should look like he collides with his own teammate there, but got to give a lot of credit also on the back end. Spencer able to shut down an opportunity for Fox Chapel. Best gets over to the bench and nods to the coaching staff. He's okay. Just, he's a little bit of a breather. With 127 left on the penalty. With 3.3 left in the period that will likely be sent over to the third period unless... Fox Chapel gets a long shot off here. Just a couple of seconds left. Going back to Goldstein. Second comes to an end. 2 2 the score. Lots of action in the first two periods of play. As we'll take a break and be back. We'll talk about what we've seen in the first two periods and much more here on JRN Sports in partnership with Ted Van TV. 2 2 TJ and Fox Chapel. If you accept credit payments with anyone other than eServices Payment Technology, you are paying too much. At eServices Technology, we redefine convenience and security with our cutting-edge merchant payment processing. Whether you're a small business or large corporation, switch to a more accurate and efficient payment processing tool. Trust eServices for secure transactions that redefine the future of payments and can beat your current rates. Visit us at eServicesTech.com. Conveniently located near Baldwin High School. Feels good to be off the sidelines, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it does. That extra effort with AHN Sports Medicine got you back here. With every specialty set, custom training day, and personalized drill, you bettered your body. 
Now line it up. They don't see this move coming. Told you. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. At Kenny Ross, we've always served our neighbors by offering the best value on new Ford models. This month, lease a 2023 Ford F-150 STX 4x4 Supercab for $379 per month for 36 months. Nobody beats a Kenny Ross deal. KennyRossFordSouth.com. Maya, can you come in here, please? Yeah, Dad, what's up? Is, is that your brother on the TV? Yeah, that's my brother. It looks like it's tonight's game. But how can that be your brother? I have never missed a single game. We couldn't do it tonight. Remember, you broke your foot. Right. Well, I don't know who's putting on this production, but without them, I'd be missing this. Trout Plumbing is a registered and insured master plumber that services the South Hills. They offer a variety of services, including camera inspection and dye testing. Trout Plumbing also offers a veteran and senior citizen discount. When in doubt, call the Trout at 412-983-8106. Discover the heart of Pittsburgh at Mount Washington Shop and Save. At Mount Washington Shop and Save, we're more than just a grocery store, we're your neighborhood destination. From the freshest local produce to gourmet delights, we've got it all under one roof. Experience convenience, quality, and savings, all in the heart of Mount Washington. Mount Washington Shop and Save, where Pittsburgh shops with a view. Shop smart, shop local, shop Mount Washington Shop and Save.
We're back for the third period of play in what was an action-packed first two periods at Ice Castle. Tied at two between Thomas Jefferson and Fox Chapel. Austin Bexel, Nate Reisinger alongside JRN Sports in partnership with 10 Band TV. Very critical game for seeding, standings, all the not, with about seven or so games left on the calendar. Absolutely, and you can't ask for a better third period. Knotted up at two. A lot of high-paced plays so far in this game. A couple glorious goals. Picking the corners for both teams. Ryder McGurk, a tremendous goal to set the tone also to start the game. But two pivotal points on the line. Fox Chapel trailing TJ by two points in the standings with a bunch of teams surrounding. And the Fox Chapel Foxes begin, which was carried over from the second period, on the power play. Still 52 seconds to go on the penalty to Ryder McGurk. Fought for near the far side boards. That's Kissane trying to poke it around. Looking for Casile, but right past his stick and back out. Goldstein with Stock giving him chase. Goldstein to Casile. Kissane's there with him. Pokes it back. Rather keeps it as Kissane right to the glove as it goes in. Just enough room for Dom Casile on the power play. Thought maybe. Just maybe Porowski got a glove on it, but it goes in, and Fox Chapel grabs the lead. And Porowski going to the bench. They're going to make a goaltending change here. And that was just a, a wide-angle shot, as we talked about. And you can see it sitting on the pad, sort of getting ready to fall over, and it does so. And Fox Chapel, I mean, yet again, a sort of odd-angled shot. We saw Wiseman shoot from that far angle in this left-hand corner down to our left side, and now on basically the opposite end. Kassane's able to do the same thing. Or Kassil, rather. How about Dom Kassil? Gets the goal, so Kassil, Wiseman, Tucker Cullen, the goal scorers for Fox Chapel. One minute in, Fox Chapel on the power play, takes the lead against Thomas Jefferson, three to two, and again, Fox Chapel would love to have against the Jaguars. Poked in front, and Watson's there to save it. So, new goaltender, into the game for Thomas Jefferson in this third period. It's Aiden Doherty. He's 2-1 on the year. 233 goals against average and a 900 save percentage. And then he gets the chance and trying to bring TJ back. There was no time wasted either. As soon as that goal went in, I mean, heading to the bench, Porupski was already on his way. And John Zyler, really no hesitation yep. there. As McCann sent it around and Best is there. Trying to slow it down. Pokes it off the boards. Now Weiss, Weiss, nifty move, sends it around, and a shot is blocked. Good chance there, but Scott Allen couldn't get it to go. And for Zyler and TJ, I mean, you have to think there's some frustration right now because yes. the chances that TJ has, have had in this game, and now Fox Chapel's ahead on a fluky goal, that, that's going to be a little frustrating for you. Tucker Cullen almost had another one there, but that one maybe off the side of the glove of Watson on the shot attempt that was sent all the way there. That was Weiss who sent it towards the net. And now he has it. So Weiss tried to send it up. McCann couldn't corral. Now Tucker Cohen. Nathan Serra gets around the defender and tips it in. Best back to chase it. Also Jacobs. Isaac Jacobs, the senior captain, still looking for his first goal. Lorenzi couldn't slow it down, now chipped ahead. Pokes around in front. He's trying to get Pierce Osterholm a chance at it. Now DJ moves up with it, and once again, it's Goldstein. He sends Fox it back in. Fox Chapel getting away with a little bit of a penalty there. Haberman laid the boom on someone well away from the play. So ref's not able to see that one. Lorenzi with it up to Gallus. Gallus on the near side. Kaiser's there defensively. Poked around. Lorenzi tries to get it back on his stick. Fight for it is chipped out. Off the ice goes Parker Haberman. Now back into the possession of the Jaguars. Poked out the center. Gallus with a big hit at center ice. Here's Lorenzi. Near side boards. Lorenzi past the blue line and chips it. Over to Stock, 2-1-1 one, one emerges. Oliver, back to Stock, and just missed it, was fanned on. I think might have been poked around by Watson, might have got a good save on it. 
And that all starts back here from Lorenzi, able to float it up. And what a play there, Stock. See if we can get another look. And Oliver going in. And Stock. No, he just he just fans yeah, he on fans that. On Came it. in, handcuffed him on the shot. But a tremendous opportunity there for Thomas Jefferson to even things up here. And again, a, a great up by Lorenzi. Creates that two on one. Great opportunity that's folks. Now back in off the face off as Pollo sent it in. Fought around as out of the box. Ryder McGurk is back out there after it was him in the box when Box Chapel scored the go-ahead goal. I think we have a hand pass called. With 13.06 to go in the third period. Box Chapel leads it by a goal. So TJ overall 9-2-0. 18 total points. It's good for second place behind Latrobe. And the double A standings. Wiseman and Oliver on the draw. Top line's out there. Wiseman with it. Has Kissane with him. Wiseman, offsides. Wiseman just not able to continue to push the puck forward there. Tough call. Didn't know if that went all the way over the line from our angle, but regardless, faceoff comes back outside. TJ changes out. It's top line for the second line, and Allen wins it back. Now Flume out there with Weiss and Allen. Killing Kissane. Kissane with a shot. And it goes off Dockerty. What a beautiful dangle there by Kissane going through the wickets of the defender, and that all started from the back check of Kassain going back the other way. Allen tried to poke it in front, but no one home on the doorstep. Now here's Kassain again. Kassain drops it back. Shot attempt, fought off. Wiseman on the shot. Now sent back towards the near side boards. Strip matter, it's deflected. Sent to the far side. Wiseman sends it for Tucker Cullen. It was walled off there though by Nick Best, the senior defenseman. Sends it through center ice. Best. Tried to wrap it around. Taken by the Foxes. Once again, here's Kissan. He's been out there for a while. Kissan tried to leave it for Cullen. Streaking towards the net, but once again, TJ tries to poke it. Can't get it out. Best battling with Casile there. Now Gallus. Ryan Gallus chips it. Gets it back. Looks for Weiss. And Weiss gives chase. Has McCann at the blue line. He's got it. McCann's shot goes wide. Best decides not to chase it, and Tucker Cullen takes it, takes it on his stick. Up to Sarah, deflected. And right back to Weiss. Gallus looked for Lorenzi. It was blocked before Lorenzi could try to get it by Tucker Cullen out of the near side. Porter Hill pokes it. Casile gives chase. And Ison called. 11 minutes exactly to go in the third period. Fox Chapel up a goal. And Thomas Jefferson still pouring on the shots. 29 to 17, the advantage in that category. But Fox Chapel two for four in the power play. And we talked about that Casile goal right now being the difference maker. I mean, just it's one you want to have back. But right now, TJ's calling from behind. Dallas and Casile at the circle. And left for Casile to carry with it. And pokes it to the far side. Could not connect with Cullen there. Now it's Spencer. Brian Spencer, 97 with it. Tried to chip it behind the net. Now on the stick of Lorenzi. Lorenzi tried to connect with Gallus. Gallus can't corral though. Now here's Nathan Sarah. Simon couldn't glove it. Sarah tried to put it up for Cullen. Now icing, and taken by Spencer. I think it was on sides as well, as now Cullen has it, tries to throw it in front, almost went in. Sarah was in front of the net. Could have bounced off of somebody for a chance there, and a shot goes wide. Cullen tries to tip it in front, deflected around a couple of times. And now Kaiser, Kaiser's shot is blocked. Here's Casil. Casil with it. Sarah's there, and that comes undone and with 9.57 to go, we'll have a face-off 
on the far side circle. Really respectable shift there for freshman Roman Flume, who was, you know, coming back to pick up a couple players who were sitting out in front. Then he blocks a shot high up from the point all over in that offensive zone chance for Fox Chapel as they tried to get another one in. Turn around by Best. Now Oliver dumps it in. Stock with him. Stock gives chase, but good job to wall him off there. That was Dylan Work. He goes and tries to retrieve this one, but it's Best first to the puck. Now Work there with Oliver. Working Oliver along the wall. Nine and a half to go third period. 3-2 Fox Chapel out in front. Ryder McGurk, and now it's best to send it towards the net. Stock tried to poke it in front, but it's deflected to the far side. Jacobs sends it back to the neutral zone, and now we'll carry it in. Here's Jacobs, sends it towards the net, and gloved by Doherty. And so far since Doherty's come in, he's been pretty sharp for Thomas Jefferson. That's a difficult task to be asked to come in a few seconds into the third period. I mean, it's, it's one thing to say, hey, during the intermission, you're going to start this period, but it's another thing that... You're not even ready to go, and you're thrust into the position. So he, he settled in pretty nicely here and seen a couple good chances from Fox Chapel. Able to deflect that one away as well right off the faceoff. Oliver tries to poke it off the boards. Able to do so. Two on one might emerge here. Now two on two for McGurk. Ryder McGurk with it. Tried to center, not able to do so. It was deflected on the way there by Jacobs. Rather Goldstein there. And now it's Cohen. Brady Cullen tried to corral. Now Goldstein again. With McGurk pressuring. It came from McCann. Wiseman with it. Wiseman's shot goes wide. Brady Cullen gives chase. Sent back out from Oliver all the way down. And we'll be icing. And Wiseman trying to look off over to Grady Cullen. Trying to get Doherty to bite there. But a great stick there from Thomas Jefferson on the defensive end to deflect it well wide as Fox Chapel trying to muster up a couple opportunities here. If you're TJ, Nate, as a former player that's played in this league, what would you try to do to create offensively here? Is there any set play you would try off the faceoff once it's back into the offensive zone? I mean, obviously move it to your defense, but the one thing that they've gone away from a little bit here is taking it wide and trying to create the opportunities. We saw Ryder McGurk early on and a couple other players take it wide and, and create and get guys to the net, and that's something they've kind of strayed away from here the latter part of the second period and now on the third. Blows tried to send it for Allen, but it's taken up by Wiseman. Wiseman trying to go through two defenders, not able to do so. Knifed off the puck, and now here's Allen. Allen with it with Blows. Also Wise with him. Sent on a shot from Spencer that went wide off the blocker of Watson. Simon with Weiss in Blows. Shot goes over the glove of Watson. Blows fights for it in front. Wiseman has it and puts it high off the glass. <laughs> Everyone on that Fox Chapel bench was ducking for cover high off that window pane. Thinking it was going right into the bench. That's what it looked like. Just enough room off the glass. Weiss with it. Got it knocked away by Casillo and might have just chopped at his stick. Not a happy camper there. Gonna be a penalty called on Thomas Jefferson. Penalty will be on Nathan Weiss, the senior forward on the third line. Fox Chapel with two power play goals, so they've been able to convert a couple odd angle shots as we talked about, Casillo and Wiseman. Able to pick their spot and put it in. We'll see the way they set up this time we talked about Thomas Jefferson's been very aggressive on the penalty kill, but haven't been able to stop them the last two times. TJ, a very solid offensive team, but this is a chance for Fox Chapel to potentially put this thing out of reach and make it a two-goal game with seven minutes left. And that's the other thing. I mean, you play devil's advocate there. You put it them, you're down two goals if you're Thomas Jefferson, but you have the offensive firepower to get right back in the game. All you need is basically a minute or so to, to, to get right back into things. Goldstein with the rest of his team trailing and sent back out all the way down. It's cleared out by Stock. Now Goldstein again. 
Brings it through center. Goldstein drops it back for Kissane. Kissane to Goldstein. Goldstein, nice to try to just poke it in front. Puck still loose. Now Wiseman again. Another one of those plays, they just throw it there and just hope that it trickles in. Casile shot goes way up high over the netting and goes way out of play. It went over top one of the boxes here and a puck that may not be retrieved for a while. Yeah, I don't know if you're getting up there on, on top of one of like the, the offices here in Ice Castle. So have to get a new puck with 6.15 to go and a 3-2 lead, 105 still to go on the Weiss penalty. TJ again just tries to clear it out, able to do so. And now here comes Ryder McGurk. Ryder McGurk all the way in. McGurk turns around but can't knock it to go. Another save made by Watson. Goldstein lost his stick there trying to defend on McGurk and he went flying. But man, he tried to tuck it there and go back sort of across the grain once he got to the backhand. Maybe not the best move, but Watson played that pretty well. Kissade sends it in front for Tucker Cohen. And whistles again as the net came off. And we'll put it back on and take a look at the replay. Just look at the speed there. Goldstein trying his best to defend and just... A couple of inches. Shuffles just wide, man. I mean, McGurk, we've seen it time and time again. I mean, he can really, really turn on the Jets when he wants to, and, and he flew in there, but Watson able to slide over, sort of take away the space that he probably wanted. He wanted to tuck it in like he did that first goal to start this game. Sent all the way back down to the Fox Chapel end. 24 seconds remain on the penalty to Weiss. McGurk out there trying to pressure as it's sent back and once again dumped in by Simon. Allen also there to try to chip it up. Nine seconds and counting. Up to Jacobs. Jacobs, it's covered by Doherty. Jake Simon sort of biting on that pass there. Oh, did he get lucky that Jacobs just pushed it too far ahead because Jacobs would have been all alone with a great look on Doherty. So one second remaining on the penalty. Second game coming up at 9 o'clock, Upper St. Clair and Seneca Valley here on JRM Sports in partnership with 10 Band TV in AAA. Two tremendous games we got on tap tonight. Two teams fighting for the upper half of AA and Seneca and USC, same in AAA. Buck stays in play, almost bounced into the TJ bench. Under five minutes to go in a one goal game. Nathan Sarah with it. Austin Beck told Nathan Breisinger alongside JRM Sports, 10 Band TV. First night of broadcast that will carry through the month of February. McCann battles for it near side. Jacobs also there. Jacobs, one of the biggest players on the team, especially for Fox Chapel. Big presence out there on the third line. Also the team captain. Best sends it off the boards for Stock with Oliver and McCann. Drop back to McCann. McCann's shot, deflected in front. Oliver tried to poke at it. Now Best has a shot. That one's blocked in front. Best deflects it back to the boards and fell to the deck where TJ's fans are trying to claim her for a penalty. Not there though. McCann bumps into Jacobs. Puck still loose. McCann deflected to the near side. Back out for Oliver. Oliver shot all the way back and just cleared all the way down. Not on net, it'll be icing. Thomas Jefferson trying to do anything they can right now to push and get a goal. We'll take another look at what the TJ faithful were trying to clamor for a penalty. His best to shot got blocked. He went all the way to try to retrieve it and eh, could have got something there, diving for it. That was the attempt by 19, Strip Aiden matter, Strip Matter. Yeah. Strip Matter, I mean, he did get puck first, but I mean, He's lunging for it, and I mean, that's a that's a questionable one that might have not have got called here, especially at this point of this game, and with TJ trailing by a goal. McGurk with it. Ryder McGurk. Lost it. Now tried to get it up to Casile. Not there, and now has it off the deflection. Casile off the boards. Tried to get it off the pass to Haberman. Now Goldstein tips it back to Casile. 
Delayed off sides, now good. Fox Chapel back into the attacking end. Up the ice and Goldstein is able to punch it back in. Gallus was trying to pressure there, but just kind of overskated it. Now Spencer with it. Spencer with the puck in three minutes to go. Spencer gets it in. Behind the net, Gallus gives chase. Overskated it, and it's going to go all the way down. And be icing with 2.48 to go in the period. Obviously not what Fox Chapel wants to have in defensive zone faceoff right now, but what Goldstein did right there is something they're probably going to have to resort to for a lot here because Thomas Jefferson is going to start to pour it on with these opportunities and get pucks to the net. And you see some of the defensemen out here, McCann and Best. McCann especially has really hopped into the offensive play, getting down low, trying to generate some scoring from the back end. If you're TJ, when do you pull your goalie? Hmm. Probably not till about the two minute mark. So you got about 45 seconds left here. Knocked away from Grady Cullen's opportunity. Good stick poke check away by McCann there. And because we've, we've talked about how this team can score. I mean, we talk about the prowess that they have. And, and so it's almost as if maybe pulling your goalie is not what you want to do. Oliver with it behind the net. Has stock with him. Oliver also has blows there. Best calls for it. Oliver's shot. Might have rung off the post. Now Best. Best on the opportunity. Tried to poke it in front. Still behind the net. Best has McCann up top if he elects to use him at the blue line. Best still has it and pokes it over. McCann with another opportunity. McCann's shot deflected around a couple of times. It in! Thomas Jefferson ties it with 1.54 to go. McCann's shot went all the way in. Deflected around a couple of times and think it's going to go. The goal for Connor McCann is third of the air. Just pinballing all around. Wow, that came all the way off strip matter and bounced back in off Watson. That was well wide. Love to get another look at that. But, I mean, we just talked about it. They were just going to fire at will on the net. And McCann, we just had talked about him. He's, he's bringing the offensive punch from the blue line. And we're going to get a timeout here, I believe potentially from Thomas Jefferson. But nonetheless, I mean, just, just kept bouncing around. So Connor McCann, his third goal of the season. Goal scorers for TJ, Ryder McGurk, Andrew Oliver, Connor McCann. We're tied at three. Under two minutes to go in the third period of play. And it looked as if John Zyler would have called a timeout if they got a faceoff and didn't score before that. He was drawing up something on his board. It looked like something you know, it was brewing over there, and Doherty, there wasn't even a thought to pull him, and that's what we had touched on. I mean, when do you pull your goalie? Well, you don't have you don't to if you to can now. score, right? And that is just putting pucks on the net. Good things can happen. And they put a lot on net. 32 shots right now on net. The Fox Chapel's 20. Stock carries it in. Stock shot is deflected wide past Watson. Watson pokes it to the back behind the cage where McCann battles there. Fight for it, and now here comes Casile. 105 to go. Casile carries. Casile all the way to the net. Behind the net, and now sent back to the boards. And back to the center red. Casile got dumped pretty good after that play. I don't even know if he really got a shot off on that play. Went really hard yet again, as we've talked about. He's going to the dirty areas and try to score there again. Under a minute to go, regulation third period. 3-3 three, three to score. Stock up to Oliver. Oliver with an opportunity. His shot is fought off by Watson. Here's Stock. Got it knocked away. Work working at it. Stock as well at the blue line. 24 seconds in count. Here's Nathan Sarah. Fought off by Ryder McGurk with Allen right by him. Here's Simon. Simon shot, tipped around a couple of times, still open in front and sent all the way down with 10 seconds and counting. 8.3 officially on the icing. Thomas Jefferson right back at it. And we talked about is this a team that can score, you know, a couple goals in a short period of time. And we're seeing it right now. I mean, almost again. Very capable. Beating Watson. But Watson, I thought, has played a pretty solid game today, you know, behind this Fox Chapel team. We got a timeout for Thomas Jefferson. Zyler's going to use his timeout, talk things over, draw up that faceoff play as we talked with 8.3 left. So John Zyler graduated from Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson Hills, PA. 
He's done a lot of great things in his hockey career. Drafted 132nd overall by the Phoenix Coyotes in the 2002 NHL entry draft. And we take a look at some of the highlights from his team and a lot of goals early and often, as well as a lot of penalties. How about that one? Sharp shot from Tucker Cullen, the freshman, his eighth of the year. Cullen scored, Don Casile scored, Liam Wiseman as well. The penalty shot, though, that was missed. Great opportunity for the Foxes and Nathan Serra just went wide. Andrew Oliver is 13th of the year. Leads everybody other than William Wiseman, who's been fantastic, is 16th of the year earlier as take a look at some of the goals that have just batted around a couple of times. And the last one going Thomas Jefferson's way. There's that one that ended up pulling Borupski on that Casil just Shot from the corner, odd angle shot. Threw it off Perupski's back. So it'll be Allen on the faceoff. Oliver is also out there with stock. 8.3 to go in the offensive zone. One back though by Fox Chapel. Two seconds and one. And we're going to overtime. Three, three the score. We'll take a short break and be back after this on JRM Sports with 10 Man TV. We've always served our neighbors by offering the best value on new Ford models. This month, lease a 2023 Ford F-150 STX 4x4 Super Cab for $379 per month for 36 months. Nobody beats a Kenny Ross deal. KennyRossFordSouth.com. After being sidelined with a shoulder injury, two minutes in the box isn't so bad. Now get back out there. With AHN Sports Medicine, you're ready for what's next. Your body's rehabbed and recovered. Your legs primed to outski your defender. Your technical skills perfected. And just like that, you're back. Oh, yeah, you're back. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. 51 minutes was not enough to decide a winner tonight. We go to an extra period. Three on three hockey in overtime, three minutes on the clock. And here we go, one back to Thomas Jefferson and Spencer. So it's Spencer, Oliver, and Allen out there with Wiseman, Goldstein, and Casile. And this will be fun. I mean, both these teams can wheel, especially this group from Thomas Jefferson. Shot fought off by Watson on the attempt from Allen. Into the hands of Wiseman's stick. On, off on Wiseman's stick, and now Goldstein. Go, Goldstein tried to go all the way in, but Allen knocked it away. 30 seconds gone by. Here comes Allen with Oliver trailing. Allen shot, fought off by Watson. And again, TJ remains the team active and aggressive in the offensive zone as Casile is knifed off the puck by Spencer, fought off and shouldered off as well, covered by Doherty. Great step there by Spencer on Casile. Spencer just staring right into his chest, not letting him get around him. We've seen that a couple times from Fox Chapel, able to weave their way through, get a couple looks, but now it's a chance for Fox Chapel to get some of his own time. So it's Casil in stock on the faceoff. Here comes Ryder McGurk. Ryder with a chance. Ooh, and could not get it to go. He sends it around and stock cannot get it to go. Ryder McGurk gives chase with Wiseman. Wiseman knocks it away, but falls to the ice. Fox Chopper fans wanted a penalty. Here's Best. Stock with Best. Stock shot. Not there. Best with an opportunity. Standing alone. Best. It goes in. Thomas Jefferson wins in overtime. Nick Best game winning goal. Fourth goal of the year. And the All Star wins it for the Jaguars. Thomas Jefferson just staying with it the whole way. The toe drag by Stock. Waiting out the defender. And then Best just turns. He says. Give me some uh, give me some spit time and space and I'll bury it on you there. 4-3 Thomas Jefferson wins it in the extra frame against the Fox Chapel Foxes. TJ now 20 points on the season. What a performance back and forth by these two teams. As Nick Best had it all alone and an opportunity to celebrate. 
A lot of credit to Grant Watson. I mean, he, he played really well on a ton of shots thrown his way. 36 total on the evening, and Nick Best just standing there with plenty of space, and he's able to rip it in. Watson got a little bit of it, but not enough. And a ton of pretty goals tonight, picking the corners for both teams. And what was an exciting and entertaining hockey game here in the PIHL. Four to three, Thomas Jefferson leads it. Stick around for game two of our doubleheader here on JRM Sports in partnership with Ted Van TV. It's the Upper St. Clair Panthers and the Seneca Valley Raiders. Triple A hockey up next. I want to thank our entire crew that made today's broadcast possible, including Jake Mislipchik and Ryan Milan, our director and producer inside the truck, as well as Corey Berger, Ed Laurent running our ringside camera, Mark Cardillo getting all of our behind the scenes action as well. For Nathan Breisinger, I'm Austin Bechtold saying so long with the final score. 4-3, Thomas Jefferson wins it here on JRM Sports, a partnership with 10 TV in the PIHL. <laughs>